Hello, this is Steve from Beatles Leatherworks. And uh, we've got a few projects we're going to do today. My favorite shoes. They are the classic, 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 classic floor shop Imperials. And we've got two pairs of, uh, uh, this is the Cordovan one, floor shine Cordovan. That's the color number eight. This is going to be the black. These are the brown pebble grain, and this is the black pebble grain. Now, they're going to run from anywhere from $460 to about $560. So, everybody asks me how much was the prices. So, I guess they don't want to watch the video. So, I'll say it in the beginning. So, you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. It's okay. So, um, all right. So, let's get started. Even though these are my favorite shoes, some of the production does lack a little bit of quality. Now, I don't know from what year to what year, but there are differences in the way they are built. This one, for example, has a fiberboard heel base. It's paper, basically. Some of them have leather, some of them have plastic. I'm not sure which year is for which year, but um, if it's not leather, then, then most of the time I replace them. I mean, we're doing all this work. Can't really leave it paper, you know? Golly, these suckers are on there. Sometimes they come off real easily, sometimes they want to fight you. I like to fight, so it's okay. I like to fight, but with shoes. Yeah, used to in my younger years. Bit of a hot head. Not anymore, I don't think. Well, maybe sometimes. Come on now. Well. And that is the midsole that's off, and then there's the cork. All that will be replaced. That's the shank. It's a fiberglass shank. Some have metal, some have fiberglass, some have none. These are not bad shape. All right, let's continue. Can you guys hear the bird chirping? It's a beautiful sound. Sun hasn't come up yet. But the birds wake up early. <laughs> like me. Oh Lord. 
Well, I hope everybody's doing okay with this uh, madness going on around the world. Guess we have to hold on. Hang tight for a little bit longer. Oh, I got Mr. Zeus with me today. Zeusy, come here. Come here, buddy. Hey. Come here. You want to come up here? Come here. Don't go up there. Hey, come Look at that. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. Up there. He's keeping me company today. Alright, so we're picking the stitches. So as you can see, we're just, it's a tedious job, but it's kind of cool. One by one, take them out because we got to replace them with new ones. You see something out there. Don't you, don't you dare jump. Stay. Hey, come here. Hey. Now, what time is it before? This one has got the plastic base in it. Now, I can only tell, I can already tell it's going to be a problem before I even take it apart. I mean, look how thick it is here. It looks like they've piled on like three layers on top of each other. More than what's supposed to have. And there's a bunch of stitches on the welt there that's been piled up. Which I don't care about too much. That's not good. It's not a good sign. So, I have a bad feeling that... This one is going to be, it's going to require a lot more work than just the regular sole and heel that I took it in for. like building a building a house on on a very weak foundation you don't want to do that all right i have to figure something out all right let's continue well i took the welt off there was no way i was going to put a sole on that crappy welt that was stitched over like a thousand times unbelievable man oh it's okay We'll put a new welt on. We'll clean this up real good right now because when the welt's on, you can't really get into the crevices of the edges there. We'll clean them up and condition it. Now we've got a cut on the, this is called the medallion. You guys can see. See that right there? Not much I can do about that. Let me just condition that up, you know. Not too bad. The other one's okay. Ah, hate the fact that, that people just don't know what the hell they're doing and they just abuse the hell out of the shoes. Now I gotta come and clean house. All right. You got to be careful. There's staples here. Pick the hell out of you. 
the little metal pieces look. They sta they stapled the gemming. The gemming is this piece right here, material, the fabric that's glued onto the footbed. They stapled that with the uppers so they can put so they can sew the welt on. But man, those those suckers are sharp. If you're not careful, it'll prick you and wake you up. They wake up. Time to work. Yeah, I've been pricked before. <laughs> Get your mind out of the gutter. I hear some of you guys saying, shame on you guys. Shame on you. Shame on you. All right. All right, as you guys can see, this is going to take a bit longer. So we're just going to, again, we're going to clean it up and, and sew the welt on. Maybe I'll fast forward the welt a little bit, speed it up so you guys don't sit there and watch me sew the welt on for, for an hour. All right, let's continue. All right, so this is called a split welt. Okay. Basically, it stitches like that, and that part right there goes on the upper part. There are regular welts without that. They call a split welt because they split that right there. We have to dye it black. I took some of my coffee and I rubbed it on there and get that dark shade. No, I didn't. I'm kidding. Oh my God. You guys believe me. <laughs> oh my God. It was dye. It was Phoebe's dye. It was Phoebe's. It was Phoebe's leather dye, okay? So I'm gonna let that dry for a little bit before I go ahead and stitch it on there. All right, let's continue. Can't believe you guys believed me. <laughs> I'm using Big Four here. This is just to moisturize it a little bit. I wiped it down with a little bit of thinner well, a little bit of water first, a little bit of thinner. We'll do a little bit more cleaning a little later. This is just a, give it a little bit of moisturizer. I do this especially on the shells, the older shells, because, you know, they need, the leather needs be softened up a little bit we don't want to we don't want to damage it more than what it is already you know so this will just kind of add a little bit of softness to it all right let's continue now i'll show you guys uh just a couple of seconds of of how i do this that's not really not really difficult, you just have to, this is a jerk needle, it's got a little hook at the end, see it or not. Make sure that you follow through the original holes of the shoe, the original holes of the welt, poke the needle through, hook the, uh, the thread on there, pull the thread through, and run the other thread through the loop. I've got this leather cover here on my pinky, so I pull it from there. And on this side, I wrap it around the handle and give it a nice tug. What it does is basically the thread is locked, locked in like this. So you don't want to pull too hard on one end and, or the other. You try to keep that tension right in the center of the, of the welt and the uppers. So you just have to continue this all the way around the shoe. Yeah, this is a this is again this is a time-consuming job, right? But once it gets done, I mean it'll have a brand new welt on the shoe, single stitch. It'll look really nice once it's finished. Instead of this crap right here, I mean eh, it's impossible to leave that like that. Look at this thing. That's why, you know, there's a lot of cobblers out there 
Sometimes they take corner shortcuts, you know. You've got to remove these stitches here like this in order for you to put another row of new stitches. If you keep on piling that up, it's going to damage the welt. Then we're going to be in this situation where it costs more time and more money. But unfortunately, it's not going to cost more money now. It's just, I got to do it. It's got to get done. Susie, hey buddy, what are you doing? Why don't you say hi to everybody? Come here. Come here. Oh, wow. Look at him. Oi. Hi, everybody. Uh oh, what did I do? Did I poke you? I choked him, baby. All right, I'm sorry, buddy. All right, good place. Let's continue. Voila. Now, doesn't that look better than what it was, what it did before? Yes, sir. I think it looks good. It's going to look real good once it gets done. I'm glad that uh, we decided to replace it. Oh, Lord. You guys hear that rasping in my voice? <clears throat> well... I thought, I still do think, I've got an upper respiratory infection, right? I mean, I'm not a doctor, of course, but, you know, you have common sense, you know what I mean? So, so we did one of those virtual doctor thing, and um, it turns out that doctor thinks I might have a allergy or something I mean this has never happened to me before this this kind of you know the throat mucus nasty thing my throat's not itching it's just it just gets mucus and I have to cough it up <clears throat> you know god forbid you know we thought it could be what it could be but we don't have the other symptoms like fever aching shortness of breath stuff like that you know Thank God. So he told me to get an inhaler and give that a try. It's been going on for about three weeks now. Again, I've never really had that before, you know. This uh, this kind of wheezing at, at nights when I go to sleep. So inhaler seems to be making it better. But I think I need more tests or something, you know. No, I don't have that virus. We talked about it, the doctor, but he says you're not showing any symptoms of of that virus, so I wouldn't worry about testing you right now. <clears throat> but it's just my voice is so raspy. But it's okay. There's no pain. It's just, just annoying, you know? Other than that, it's not too bad. So that's what my rasping voice is about. All right, I'm okay, don't worry. I'm still here. I mean, we've kept the shop going for all this time. We've kept it open. Well, not really open, open, but semi-open. You know, we've got the open, we've got the, like the open sign turned off, but our phones are on. We can answer the phones. People want to come pick up, drop off. We'll open the door for them. There have been a lot of mail-in orders, which is great, you know. I really appreciate that. I hired two people, one full-time, one part-time, which is great. I could use the help, and we've been trying to catch up on all the backlog work, which is great. <laughs> so, so it's going okay. It's not bad at all. I think for May, which is, this is early May now, I think we'll be we're we're okay till full May. You know, I think uh, I think we'll be pretty much caught up. There's a lot of bags I have to do, which I will get to. I promise. I know a lot of people are waiting, but I'm just the one man show. You know, I'm doing the best I can. So hang in there. I will get it done sooner or later. All right. So we're. Getting there slowly and surely with this with this job here. 
one down, one to go. All right, let's continue. All right, so we've got the third pair apart. Now, once we take it apart, you get a better idea of what what structurally needs. If it doesn't need anything, you can just continue the job. Now, this particular one, the welt, you remember the welt, we, the thing that we just stitched on here, the second pair? The welt is a little loose. Now, it's not in bad shape, it's just loose, okay? So when I do this, you can see the white stitches there. You're not supposed to bend that welt down that far like that. It's supposed to be really snug, like, like that one, you see? When you pull it down, you can't bend that down too far. It won't bend down that far. So, you see all those stitches right there? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna stitch this from here to here. The rest of it is in great shape. Okay, just kind of structurally make it sound so we can continue the job. All right, let's see. So it turns out that all three pairs had fiberboard heel bases and one of them had plastic heel base. So none of them had leather stacked heel base. So what we're going to do, we're going to replace them with leather stacked heel bases. Okay. Now, I normally finish my soles first. Okay. Stamp them. Do them different colors, whatever the order is. I know there's a lot of people say, well, how do you do the bottoms? How do you do the bottoms? Well, you know what? I do them. It's not that hard. Take a couple of brushes, daubers of different colors, make some streaks and put some dye on top and buff it and you're done. And they all want to know, how do I do it? How do I do it? Well, I do it. Some things I want to keep to myself, like that one. So the fourth pair, which was my favorite by far, my favorite finish on the bottom, I should say, we're going to have to delay it. There's a certain something that I need to do the bottom pattern with. And unfortunately, it's nowhere to be found. Now, I don't like to blame things on people, but whenever I, whenever I work, it's at the dying area right there, okay, by my fan. It's always been there for years. Now, you know, I got some, sometimes employees come, counter help comes, you know, and things get moved around. It's possible it's somewhere, but I looked everywhere here, could not find it. It's possible it fell into the trash because the trash can's right underneath there, which I think that's what happened, you know. So, unfortunately, unfortunately, I, I wanted to finish that fourth pair along with these three pairs. It's just not going to happen. I have to wait 10 to 15 days for that certain something to arrive, so... I can finish it. I mean, I have time. That that was just brought in not too long ago. That was shipped in actually not too long ago. But I wanted to kind of finish them all at the same time because they're very similar jobs. And now I can't. Really irked me, you know, because now it's just going to sit here. So, so the fourth pair is not going to be done today. Only three pairs. But that's okay. Three is better than nothing. This one got the new welt. Now this is a little bit wider. That's why it looks a little wider, but because it is, I'm not, I haven't trimmed the welt yet. So once I put the sole on, I'll trim it together, make it, give it some shape, exactly what it's supposed to be. This one got a new midsole also because the old midsole was not wide enough. 
So we have to replace the midsole on that too. These little tapes that you're looking at, the tips, they're basically just to indicate that I'm going to put a metal tip on there. French tip. These are going to get Triumph, the gold ones. Well, gold plated, brass plated, I should say. They're not brass. And that's number three. I use, um, what do I use? Oh, Lordy, Lordy, Lord. This is what I use. Hey, it's in Spanish. For all you Spanish speaking people and for you English speaking people. Masters all purpose cement. Good people. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, what's gonna fall? Whoa, whoa. Alright, put that away. Alright, so while I'm watching the glue dry, you guys gotta do something, okay? Alright, let's continue. Can't even laugh anymore with my raspy voice. <coughs> yeah, I know. Don't sound good. But it's all good. It's all right. 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 She moves. This moves. Did I tell you guys that these are my favorite shoes? Come on, really? I didn't tell you guys? Man, how did I forget about that detail? Well, it is. It's my favorite. Jeez, all this background noise. I can't even talk anymore, man. Wait till the compress till the compressor kicks off. Anyway, I was saying these are my favorite shoes. What makes them my favorite shoes, right? They're very sturdy. I mean, built like tanks. Even though they cut corners at times with the heel bases. But it's okay. I'll forgive them. Not all of them are like that. People say they're like your father's shoes or grandfather's shoes. I agree. They are built, you know, to look like that. You know what? I guess I'll be a grandfather someday. I hope anyway. Then I can wear them maybe, no? I have. I do wear them now. I have a few pairs. Just a few. This is nice. These are going to look nice when they get done. Bit of gold accents into it. 
with red thread. enough for hammering let's continue <clears throat> hmm, looks like I'm out of blades. Sharp blades, that is. Man, this is going to be not fun. <laughs> That's even worse than the other side. All right, let's continue. I'll figure something out. All right, let's try this again with a fresh blade. Somebody was asking me the other day if I was on drugs because my hands were shaking. <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm a crack addict. He's like, oh, now I see. I'm like, oh, no, what did I just start? I'm like, dude, I'm not a crackhead. Crack is whack. <laughs> oh, Lord. Stay away from crack, kids. Well, the kind of smoke, anyway. So much easier with a fresh blade. These are called Triumph plates okay they make Lulu tips also which is the cousin of triumph which are these right here but some people prefer the brass ones well <laughs> not really brass but Brass plated. So, anyway, it's a long story, but I offer brass also. It starts like that, and I make my own, but those are a little bit more money. So, if somebody wants really brass, 100% brass, we'd have to make our own, which is not a problem to do. All right. And that is how we do the French tips. Now, now we get to open up a channel. We get to stitch it. These are stitched here. Five nails are nailed on. Got to trim the edges, do the heels. And we're getting there. Let's continue.
This is the bobbin of the machine. Okay. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna replace the bobbin, the green thread. Ready to stitch now. Let's continue. Alrighty. trimmer blade. This is basically what trims the edges of the soles. There's different widths, different shapes, round edges, where are you? round edges, skinny edges, fat edges. There's different kinds of trimmer blades out there. Now, this is a wide one, right? Because we want it to fit our soles. Our soles got a midsole and it's pretty thick. Now, most of the time what people will do, they'll sand the edge on a sandpaper and then they put edge dressing on it and finish it off. I don't like to do that. I like, I like to use the trimmer because the trimmer leaves a little bit of a lip right on the edge right here. Let me see if I can go get it. This one's done already. If you kind of look at it, it's kind of difficult to tell when it's finished, you can really tell that edge, that little lip right there. See, when you use the sandpaper, you don't have that little lip. It's just aesthetics, right? Most of the manufacturers do it that way. I like to finish it that way too. I think it just looks, I think it just looks better. Now, loud noise coming up. A burnishing wheel basically the friction of that leather pushes against the wheel and it heats up that it's called it it's called an iron 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 you get the gym iron heating iron so you put a little wax on it it's the same shape as the trimmer that we use to trim the edges with burnishing the edges basically melting the wax on the edge of the sole to make it nice and shiny now you guys remember that that little edge bead I was telling you guys about Let's see if you can see it now See that little edge? I know it's just aesthetics, but man, it sure looks smooth. Smooth as the baby bop. I guess that depends if they have the loaded diaper in there. All we do is put wax on the edge, and 
melts it on the wheel. And then that wax gets transferred to the edge of the leather. Beautiful, just like that. You see that? Oh yeah, nice and shiny. Well, it's not shiny now, but it'll be shinier a little later. All right, let's continue. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. These are the five nails in the shank. I shouldn't say shank, shank area. It's not exactly at the shank area, but close. Oh, that's the wrong size nail. It's a little bit too long. We need a five eighths and I grabbed a six eight. Five eight is plenty long enough for it to go through the through the footbed and cinch or clinch, whatever you want to call it. And this is just a little pattern that we put on the breast of the heel there. They have that, and the manufacturer has that also. Again, it's nothing structural. It's just for looks. Looks cool. Whoa! Jeez, it's a little windy outside. I was just getting used to the birds chirping. Lucy! Yeah, you come to see if I'm okay, huh? Yes, sir. I'm okay. Don't worry. All right. Once we, um, once we hammer these, once we hammer these uh, heels on, we'll nail them from the inside, and we'll trim them, buff them, polish them. And we're almost done. This one I already glued the heel. I won't let that touch the heel area too much to get it dirty, so it doesn't hold very well. I think it'll be all right. <coughs> all right. We are getting there. I'm still bummed about that other pair. I really am. It's too bad that, that I couldn't find what I need. Now I'm going to think about it. Can't wait to get it done. I'll share it with you guys once I get it, when I finish it. Don't worry, be happy. Don't worry. Here's a little song I wrote. I wrote it note by note. Don't worry. Ah, something like that. Yeah. Hey, buddy. What are you doing? What are you doing? Did you eat chicken today? Yeah? Was it good chicken? Was it really good chicken? Tilt your head if it was good chicken. Was it good chicken? Yeah, it was good chicken. I fed him some chicken today. I mean, I can't eat. And him just staring at me. Nah, I can't do that. No. I'd be heartless if I did that. There's a little restaurant that we'd like to uh, 
go. It's just like a kebab place. It's called Moby Dick's. Pretty good stuff. Pretty good food. I get their chicken sandwiches. And um, I just got him some chicken. Just, just chicken. Not a sandwich. Just a chicken. Man, he woofed it down. Well, he woofed the first one down. It was a little hot. And he's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so he waited for about a minute until it cooled off. <laughs> then he ate the rest. Okay, let's get these nails in just right. There we go. Because the surface is shiny, it's slipping. Okay, we are getting there. All right, let's continue. So we're doing heel lining on this pair, particular pair, which is basically a piece of leather that goes in the back of the heel right here because he wore a hole inside. We've got brown thread for the top and then green thread for the bottom to match what's inside the lining there. Now there's two rows of stitches on there. That's one. And then one more. And that's your second row stitch. Beautiful. Very fine stitches. All right, let's continue. The end of our projects. Just have to do a couple of uh, a couple of nails here and there. Some brass nails on the heel. Clean up the uppers a little bit. The other ones are all done and waiting to be photo photo shoot. This is just basically a marking where the nail should be. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. Oh, let's not forget the V cleat. Well, it's not really a V cleat, but. Basically now, we just punch the holes for the nails to go into. And you guys can't see it. Mm. Oops. There's no light. Is that better? It's late. I'm getting a little tired. This was an all day thing, let me tell you. I took a little bit of time off. Went home, had dinner, relaxed a little bit. But that other pair really just kind of slowed me down. I mean, it was ridiculous, man. 
I was walking around looking for this piece of item that I needed to to use for the job and couldn't find it and it just kind of it just kind of slowed me down mentally too. I was like, ah, not good. But you know, what you gonna do? So the these um, these nails right here, those are skinnier nails than the rest of them. I don't know why they're like that. They're just a little. That's how they're in originally. This particular one, we're putting double rows of nails as per the customer's request. Here's a skinny one. Let's put that there. People always, people always tell me, you know, Steve, why do you waste so much time on the bottom when, when all the customer's going to do is wear it, you know? Well... Listen, you know those designer chefs, they prepare this beautiful dish, a work of art, and yet the person is just going to sit there and eat it, right? So what's the difference? Same thing. It's just a work of art, somewhat of an art form. Once it leaves my hands, the guy can, the customer can do whatever they want to do. You know, so I'm going to continue to put details on the bottom because that's what makes me happy and that's what makes the customer happy. When the customer stop being happy, that's when I'll stop doing it, which isn't going to happen. I'm going to continue this because I don't want to record it for too long. The video is already dragging. I don't know how long it is. All right, let's continue. I am putting... Um, Saphir, Cordovan, like shell Cordovan, cream, number eight, color. Actually, this is, what number is this? It's Cordovan. 75 milliliters, milliliters. MDO line, Medal Dior. Then once that dries, we're going to buff it. We're going to put Big Four on it, condition the heck out of it, maybe two, three times. We've got the new insoles in there. And we are almost done. All right, let's continue. We call this the icing on the cake. A little pattern around the edge. It's all in the details, my brother. It's all in the details. All right, I think we're done. All right, let's continue. All right, welcome back. We are done with another project. I think they turned out pretty good.
And this was the one that we replaced the welt on, remember? Insoles. This particular one got um, heel linings on the back, that back part right there, and new insoles also. Overall, I'm, I'm very happy with the with the job, except for that fourth pair. I wish I was. I wish I wish I could have finished that too, and I would have been done with it. That was going to be a cool design on the bottom. I can't tell you guys what it is, but I'll let you know once it gets the stuff comes in and I'll and I'll get it done. I'll show you guys what it is. All right. Well, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and do so, please. Give me a thumbs up, comment, share as much as you want, and um, and we'll see you guys on the next project. All right. Take care.